Welcome to the American Cathedral in Paris on this fourth Sunday of Easter, this Good Shepherd Sunday. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship wherever and whenever you are doing so. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. We have two very different ideas to hold together today, two very distinct images of our Lord, and both of them are contained in the reading from John's Gospel that we just heard. One is at the beginning and one is at the end. The one at the beginning gives us the theme of today because today, in case you haven't been hammered over the head by it already, is Good Shepherd Sunday. In the old tradition of the church on this day, we link this way Jesus tries to explain himself to the people around him with a long list of appropriate imagery, the 23rd Psalm, and a couple of the hymns you're going to hear and anthems the choir is going to sing, and even the collect of the day. But at the end of that eight verse long gospel reading, we get a very different image of Jesus, an image of command, really the image of a ruler, of a king. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. These are two very different images, images that are hard to hold together at once. So I want to call in a little help in giving you a way to think about these today. A little help that I'm going to draw from something you are sure to meet up with again and again and again and again. 
I'm speaking of that old war horse of cantatas, Handel's Messiah. I want you to leave here today with just a little bit of a music appreciation lecture. So here goes. You all know, of course, that Handel didn't write the words for his great oratorio. The King James Bible did that with a little help from the librettist Charles Jennings, the fellow who selected the text from the Bible and arranged them to tell the story Handel wanted to tell. But it was Handel who matched the music to the words, and that is where his mastery shows because Handel was a text painter. His music is composed to reflect and express the ideas held in the words. Even if you only have the slightest familiarity with the Bible, the texts are told to you in the music itself. When it comes to sheep in the Messiah, Handel has plenty of sources to draw on, and he turns to the prophets specifically to Isaiah and the sixth verse of the 53rd chapter. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Simple enough, but listen to how Handel describes these sheep that we are. First, it's simple. And then, we start wandering off along the hillside, first the boys, and then the girls, and finally all of the sheep are bounding off in all directions of the country. So Handel gives us the prophet's image of sheep, simple, perhaps, happy, yes, but willful wandering, scattered, all around the hillside, seeking our own fortunes, filled with our own ideas, not seeing our true place in the scheme of things, and certainly willing to follow off behind just about any shepherd promising us more of what we think we want. But then there is the other image we have today, the image of the king. Christ the King, the King Shepherd, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Those are the words Handel uses, this time from Revelation, the 19th chapter. And even though most of you can call up that music from memory, here it is again. What do you notice about that musical description? It is absolutely solid, immovable. It practically stands still. The melody is an insistent repetition of the same note, the Christ who stands at the still point of the whole universe. And then it ascends, step by step, as though approaching the throne of God. Christ the shepherd comes after us when our willful ways set us wandering away. When the temptations and disasters of this world come crowding in on us, Christ the Shepherd King stands as the fixed point in our world, the world in which we insist on chasing after each new passion, each new idea, each glimpse of greener grass. The shepherd who becomes the victim becomes the Christ who rises triumphantly from the dead, the king who sits at the one point in the whole universe that is not spinning out of control and taking us along with it, driven by our fears or wandering away after our own desires. That king is the shepherd who knows our natures and despite all of that comes looking after us binds us, stands right in front of us until we are no longer afraid. The king who is the shepherd knows us sheep better than we know ourselves. 
He will stand at the still center of our world, stand at the one place of safety that is left to us. And when we finally make up our minds and run, he will receive us into his arms with joy. That is our king. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Amen. stand and profess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Consoled by the knowledge that the Good Shepherd gives his life for us, let us pray for the needs of our community, our church, and our world, saying, Lord, have mercy. The earliest Christian community held all things in common, and no one was in need. May we recommit ourselves to hold the goods of this world in common and to work to eliminate hunger, homelessness, poverty, and all forms of inequality. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Following the example of the shepherd who searched for the lost sheep, let us seek out the lost in our community and welcome them in our midst. Let all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit be comforted by the presence of the Good Shepherd in their midst. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Conscious of the Good Shepherd's voice, May we speak God's words of reconciliation and peace to all we meet, and may all in governmental authority receive the joyful message of peace. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We are called to give up our lives for others. Let us pray, God, for all in serving professions who often work at low pay for the welfare of others, and in this time of pandemic, take on greater risk to themselves and their loved ones. May we give our lives to those in our care. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. We trust in the promise of Christ, the Good Shepherd, to receive those who have died as sheep of his own flock, welcoming them into the arms of his mercy, into the blessed rest of eternal peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. 
For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We offer our prayers for those whose names have been commended to us by our cathedral community. For Mike, Joanne, John, Charlie, Jim, Max, Jessica, Carol, Michael, Walter, Vicki, Alan, Joe, Jody, Stephen, Olga, Yuri, Marie Therese, Aurora, Bill, Charlotte, Eleanor, Eric, Helena, Matthew, Dan, Gemma, Rachel, Susan, Armand, David, Isabel, and Natasha. And we pray for those who have died, remembering especially Charlotte Alba, Andrew Mertz, Jean-Philippe Letrevaux, Randall, David Burnsed, David Newhouse, Stephanie Simonard, Eugenie Galatin Angle, Denis de Bost, Jajiga. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Axel Kumpers on the anniversary of his death. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. You seek us before we know your name, and you give us joy in your life. Accept our prayers of joy in being found, forgiven, and loved by you. For we pray in the name of Christ your Son, and in the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. With you. Welcome to the American Cathedral in Paris. Bienvenue à la Cathédrale Episcopale de Paris. We are so glad that you have joined us. On this fourth Sunday of the Easter season, we are now halfway through the entire season of Eastertide in which we get to explore what this resurrection life truly is about and bask in the glow of the resurrection light. One practice I can commend to you uh, for the ex enjoying and exploring this Easter season is to take in our service of choral evensong. We have a brand new service for this fourth Sunday in Eastertide and to honor and celebrate the day, the feast day of St. Mark, the Gospeler. That will be available uh, on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page starting at 6 p.m. Paris time tonight. So I commend that to you whenever and wherever you're able to enjoy it. You will find it nourishing and inspiring, I promise. There is a lot to take in of information available about our life here at the cathedral and ways to learn more about both our history uh, and our ministry. I invite you to look further into the bulletin that accompanies this live stream and to go to our website to learn more about all of that. All of our continued ministry throughout this difficult season of pandemic that is, we know is reaching so many of you and is speaking into your lives in this time with the good news of Jesus and the resurrection life. All of our ministry is made possible by your support through your continued prayers and contributions to our ministry. And so I invite you as you can, as you are able through these continued extraordinarily difficult times, I invite you to give generously from the fruits of your life and labor so that this cathedral can continue to be a bright beacon of God's radical love this Eastertide and for generations of Eastertides yet to come. Welcome once again. We are glad that you have joined us wherever and whenever you are doing so. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people 
and to the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you, and feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. In this time when we continue to be so far apart from one another, we honor the truth and the promise that even as we are scattered, we are one flock of the one shepherd gathered at this one table. I invite you to join me wherever and whenever you are to pray the, together this prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, as you promise to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may Christ, the Good Shepherd, gather you into his flock and keep you safe from all danger. And the blessing, the mercy, and the grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and pray for in heaven and on earth, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.